Hey, hey, happy Friday, everybody. Just about ready to kick it off here with my upcoming podcast. I hope that my title and description in Facebook really grabbed your attention. So I think you're gonna love this topic. Get ready, we're gonna go live here with the podcast today. Hey, welcome back everybody to A Sexy Confident Life. We are here to talk about not cutting our lifeline. Hopefully you looked at the title of this podcast and got excited and you thought, what lifeline? I would never cut my own lifeline. That would be crazy. Well, this whole idea came up when I was sitting doing um, a yoga practice and I was meditating a little bit at the end of it and I was just kind of feeling my belly because as a lot of you might know, I'm pregnant with my first baby boy, little Luca Giuseppe Lafada, and I was thinking about Luca as I was sitting there and just kind of feeling the ground beneath me and thinking about this little baby growing in my body and how his lifeline is that umbilical cord, right? I mean, he's relying on me to keep him alive. Everything that I do, everything that I eat, everything that I drink, all of the stress I have, the energy that my body is vibrating, um, you know, the relaxation that I'm having, any kind of temperature changes. I'm thinking this little guy is reliant on me. I am in control of how he feels and how he's being nurtured and and how he's growing. And I just thought, wow, what a responsibility, what a gift to be able to give that to someone and think about it in a way where I just want to do my best job. You know, I mean, I know that there's a lot of moms out there that listen to my podcast And maybe um, women that want to be moms one day, just like I wanted to be a mom. Up until 37, I decided I was going to (laughs) wait because I didn't necessarily want that role yet. But I knew one day I wanted this role, but I didn't realize what a responsibility it would feel like. All of a sudden, just boom. Oh, my gosh. Right? And I started thinking about that for all of us women that now that our lifeline is more so just reliant on us, we're no longer little babies, we're not infant children, right? Even growing up in high school and college and all through the years of young professionalhood, I think that we still have a little bit of a lifeline from our parents or our teachers or people that are supporting us and mentoring us. And I do believe we get to this point in our life where we then choose the lifeline that we know is gonna keep us living and thriving at our best. But to be honest with you, how long has it been since you really thought about your lifeline? I think about it as the life umbilical cord because I wanna bring the conversation to us as women. Those of us that you know might've carried children or wanna carry children or never gonna carry children, but we're carrying ourselves, people. We're carrying ourselves through life, and this is not an easy job. It's not any easier, right? It's even more difficult when we get to adulthood and now we're responsible for ourselves. Nobody else is responsible for us. As much as you want to think that your parents still feel responsible, they aren't. You are responsible, and you're going to take ownership of that, and I want you to think, what are my lifelines. What is helping you have that optimal survival and growth for your life? And when I started thinking about that in my own life, I realized, wow, you know, there's three different big veins that go into me. Okay, if you think about the umbilical cord, right? There's veins coming in, artery going out for that little baby. But for us, I was like, wow, you know what? We have more than just one. We've got multiple veins coming in that keep us alive and thriving. 
And then we've got an artery that goes out, which is our performance. It's how we're delivering and serving the world. That's how we're showing up. It's how we feel. It's how we are continuously being present and giving and serving, right? So if you think about that, I think one of our biggest lifelines is really what makes us feel loved and supported and, and cared for. It's a huge, that's a huge lifeline right there. Another one is what makes us uh, feel fully energized and, and strong. That's like, what are we getting from our lifeline that fuels our energy and our strength? And then that third lifeline is that what teaches us um, to become smarter and wiser in the world? And, and mentioning those three things, you just think about like your parents, you just think about your teachers, the people that helped you grow up and survive in the world. <laughs> I, I do, like immediately when I think of those, those things, I think of how my mom, she really made me feel loved and supported and cared for. You know, my teachers and my coaches and, um, you know, they really helped me become smarter and wiser. So did my parents. I think about, you know, my body, my energy and fuel. I know that, you know, my mom, she was always buying vegetables and making pintos from scratch. And, you know, she did a lot of stuff that really kind of kept us grounded and healthy. We drank a lot of whole milk because my grandparents owned a dairy farm, you know, so I had all these tools. I was an athlete, so I was encouraged to play sports. My trainers and our coaches kept me strong and motivated to get better. So I immediately think about my past. And then I bring it back to the present. I want you to think about your present. Because you might have just thought about your past. But I want you to now come into the present day and think about the lifelines those three big lifelines, the support, the love, the energy, the strength, and the mentorship, the, the growth, and the wisdom that you're getting. Because ultimately, those three things and those big categories, and I know there's multiple things in those categories, right? But they come out of them as big veins coming into your life, into your body, into your mind, into your spirit. And then that is what allows you to output everything you are, everything you do, everything you create, everything you feel. So if you don't feel like you're putting out your best, if you don't feel like you're putting out um, you know, quality relationships and love and energy and you don't have all that you need to feel like your best and to do your best, then I don't believe it's your fault. I just believe that maybe it's been so long since you looked at your lifelines and you looked at what was coming in, right? Think about what is coming in and that is ultimately up to you. So you got to take ownership of that. Take ownership and responsibility for the fact that if there isn't enough coming in to fuel you if those lifelines are kind of shredded or punctured think about it most people don't have the mentorship they're not working on the growth and getting the wisdom that allow them to really thrive maybe that lifeline is punctured and it's bleeding out maybe it's severed completely and it's not even reaching you it's not even that it's punctured and bleeding out. It is just like not even coming into you. For me, to be personally honest, and I think you've heard me share this before, when I got out of college and joined the workforce, became a personal trainer, I just stopped really learning and developing my mind. I was so burnt from college. I went right from undergrad to grad school. When I finished, I was like, don't even put a book in front of me. I don't care. I don't want to read it. All I got was, you know, I had a great mentor at work. My boss really taught me a lot about being a better trainer, being a great coach. Um, and that was really good. So I didn't completely cut that lifeline, but it was bleeding out. 
because I wasn't improving myself, my mind, as much as I could. I wasn't reading and developing and creating more wisdom for myself. It took me another five years until I picked up another book. <laughs> it was like, oh, maybe I should read a book. And it was a book by John Maxwell. And it was about dreaming again. Gosh, I gotta come up, I gotta look in my bookcase and, tell, and I'll put the book in the, in the show notes. But it was about finding your dreams. And he wrote this book to really help people uncover if you would accomplish those dreams. Because there are certain type of people, there's people that dream and then people that go for that dream or they dream and they just let it remain a dream. And when I read that book, I thought, wow, I haven't really been pursuing the dreams I have. I've just been hoping and wishing they would come true. <laughs> and that lifeline was just freaking bleeding out, guys. You know, and, and my energy was, too. It was like I had some energy habits, but, man, that lifeline was, like, frayed. It was on the brinking point of, like, freaking being broken completely. And that's why I had no energy. That's why I had no enthusiasm for my career. And I felt like I was being drained by everybody. And I wasn't excited to get up for work and teach a class. I was so bummed out and depressed. It was like, why? Because I wasn't, I cut my lifeline. I started cutting slowly. I started cutting my lifeline because I started cutting my self-care. I started cutting the energy habits and the, and the habits that really made me that powerful, strong, you know, successful trainer that I had been for so long. Because I was forgetting about the self-care while I was pursuing my career. But guess what suffered? Both me and my career. So think about your own life in this way and think about those lifelines. You know, I even think about the, the support and the love and the care that I get, that, uh, that lifeline that I reach for now in my adult life. I'm like, yeah, I got... I got my husband, I've got my siblings and my parents, my friendships. I'm going to share with you some of the most important tools that I have for these lifelines um, later on in a blog this week. But I'm talking to you right now because I want you to grab a piece of paper. I want you to grab a pen and I want you to write down these three massive lifelines where you're getting your support, your love your care, where you're getting your mentorship for your growth and your wisdom, and where you're getting those energy uh, habits and, you know, where are you, what are you using to thrive with your body, you know, with your energy and your fuel. I know I have so many of those now in my life, those lifelines, that lifeline for my energy and strength is powerful. I mean, that lifeline is like solid. I think there's a steel bar around that vein. It ain't never going to get severed unless I completely fall off the rails, which I hope won't happen. But think about you. How solid are those lifelines for you? And if you wrote down all the habits that you have and the practices that you have that keep that lifeline for your strength and energy really solid, then you're good. You should be outputting fantastic. If that lifeline for your growth and your, your um, ongoing wisdom, you're becoming smarter and you're becoming more wise because you're making better decisions and you have good perspective, you don't have this guilt and you don't live with this like regret and you don't have this ongoing negative self-talk going on because that's the kind of stuff that starts to happen when you sever that lifeline. When you stop listening to the people that can help you and, and can inspire you and give you new perspectives, you know, I hope that this podcast is a part of that lifeline. Because for me, I've had mentors that, like Brendan Burchard and even Darren Hardy, I listen to him every morning with his Darren Daily. You know, he sends me the text message. If you don't get Darren Daily, you should totally get Darren Daily. And that's for people that are also trying to build successful businesses and be entrepreneurs and be leaders. It's important that you have a lifeline for that if that's a goal for you. You know, if you're trying to build a business or you're trying to be a leader or an inspiring person for your family, and I mean, every mother is a leader, so you should be listening to Darren Daly for sure. You should be listening to Brendan Bouchard. You should be listening to Robin Sharma. You should be listening to success talks or whatnot. These are my lifelines, people. 
I don't sever them. My husband, biggest mentor for me. I don't sever <laughs> listening to him, even though sometimes I'm like, please stop, right? So you can choose in your life who these, what habits, what people, what places, what self-care you're going to add and keep in your life so that these lifelines are solid. This is my whole objective and goal for you today is to share this idea with you and get you thinking and get you writing. If you don't journal, this is a great day to start. <laughs> and I want you to have those three categories and I want you to start writing down um, the different people, the different habits, tools, and behaviors that feed your mind, your body, and your spirit. Those three lifelines so that you can give your best. You can reach your greatest potential. It is so clear to me, more than ever, as a woman now who's pregnant with her first baby, and I know it's getting my mind all thinking deeply about life and about you know, about that circle that we go through as, as women and as human beings. And it's like, now I'm taking care of another life. And it's reminding me that it's even more important now to take care of mine. How can I be the best wife and mother and leader for my team and entrepreneur and leader and, and motivator for you if I am not taking care of myself. If I sever any of my lifelines, I am weakened. I am not as capable of putting out all the energy, all the love, all the confidence, all the content that I am doing now. And I'm reading a couple books on childbirth and yoga before childbirth, all this stuff, you guys are gonna be laughing at me. But it reminds me again about the importance of our own personal self-care. Even when children come into the picture, even when a new job starts to begin, even when we're looking for that raise, even when we get married and we start, you know, a relationship that throws us off kilter and all of a sudden we're trying to adjust. How do I take care of myself and also be a wife? Even when we graduate from college and we start our job for the first time, no matter what change happens in your life, do not let it be an excuse for you to sever your lifeline. The lines that keep you feeling fully alive, your mind, your body, and your spirit alive so that you're living your best life. I hope that this reached you, this touched you, this inspired you to do some journaling and some thinking on this. And if you're ready for all the tools and the habits and the behaviors that I've been practicing for years and have put into a formula over a four week course called the Sexy Confident Woman Formula, I highly encourage you to reach out to me and learn more about that. I'll put a description in the show notes below, but honestly, it's my mission, and I call it Mission Unstoppable because every woman in the world can be unstoppable. She can go for what she wants. She can achieve what she wants. She can feel as good as she wants, but, it takes that practice of bringing those lifelines back into our body. I want you to think about think about a movie or think about you know <laughs> something just boom, just attaching and entering your soul and saying you are now getting that lifeline, getting that blood and oxygen. You're infusing yourself again with what you need to be your best. So definitely check that out in the show notes below my podcast on my website, anarenderer.com. Go to my blog and you can get this all audio, description, links, all the things that you need. I hope you guys will and I hope you enjoyed this podcast today. I'll see you next time. Peace out.